Presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man. With zither music by Anton Karas. If I were an honest man, which would be silly on the face of it, this would be my sermon. Any character who gets swindled is asking for it. You can't swindle a man unless he's so full of larceny that his very breathing is crooked. This, to a man of my talents, would be disconcerting if I didn't know that nine people out of ten are full of larceny. Like a certain American named Harris, who not so long ago came to Paris for a holiday. Strictly in Mr. Harris's honor, I concocted a juicy little swindle called horseplay. Now, Orson Welles as Harry Lyme, the third man in Horseplay. My game of horseplay began in the bar of the Creole. To start it, I had to call on a French pal of mine, André Janin. Say it to me again, Harry. The big man over there sitting at the corner table. See him? Yes, but... Look, look, Andre. all I want you to do is to get into conversation with him. Easy enough? Why not? Then, when you're talking, you find this billfold under the table. Under the table? Where you will have dropped it first. Aha! Yes, yes. yes. And in the billfold, there are papers which will identify it as yours. You return it to me, simple. Be sure to bring this man with me when I return. Let him return it. I'll be in a room here at the hotel. And all these hocus-pocus are to accomplish what? All these hocus-pocus, my friend, will result in Mr. Harris, that big man at the corner table, giving me thousands and thousands of American dollars, as you will see. Andre Janine did his job smoothly. He was sitting down and talking to Harris in a matter of minutes, as though they were old friends. From not too near, I watched discreetly. They were just getting up to go, when suddenly... Oops. Oh, I'm sorry, Monsieur Janine. What? Uh, your foot, I must have kicked him. Excuse me. My foot? But you did not. Let's see what... Oh, it's a billfold. You must have dropped it. Billfold? Dropped it? Oh, not me. I've got mine all right. Well, let's see here. Well, whosoever it is, it's sure one fat wallet. Well, look here at this. Oh, me. Uh, nothing to be leaving around in hotel bars. Seven, eight, ten, thirteen, ten mil franc notes. Must be 400 American dollars anyway. Membership card here to some club. Club de Teuf. Uh, what's that? Sounds like some sort of club where one may place bets on horse races. A turf club. This is English? Oh, sure. A turf club, eh? Uh, a fellow's name is Harry Lyme. Here, look at this. Looks like some sort of code cipher. And two race tickets. Uh, and look, look at this newspaper clipping here. From an American newspaper? I guess so. Mysterious racetrack plunger Harry Lyme winning at Belmont this season. Estimated at more than one million dollars. <whistles> Fella, tell us all right, doesn't he? We'd better uh, ask at the desk or see if there is anybody here in the hotel whose name is, uh, what is it again? Uh, Harry Lyme. Come on, let's ask Yes, what do you want? Are you Mr. Harry Lyme? Are you a newspaper man? If you are, I don't want to see you. No interviews. Simply will not be bothered by a lot of... One moment, sir, please. We simply called by to ask if you had lost anything. Lost anything? Certainly not. Good day, gentlemen. You sure you have your wallet? Your uh, billfold? Oh, good Lord. It's... Where? Now, just a second. I, I think we have found it, Mr. Oh, come Lyme. in. Come in, gentlemen. I'm sure you know how sorry I am. I... Uh, 
<laughs> if I seem to be rude, it's just that these reporters, even here in Paris, you know, all a man in I my position. I suppose you I'm... can uh, identify the bill for oh, I certainly can. Now, let's see. Some cash, maybe four or five hundred in French-American money, a membership card and Club de Turf, a code cipher. I use my business and, uh, oh, let's see, a couple of cablegrams. It's yours, all right. <laughs> well, can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. You would have put me in a... Here, why don't you take this cash and have yourselves a good time? Oh, nonsense. Don't be no, foolish. Please. Right please me very much if you take it. Seriously, these papers here, they're, they're what's of value, although only to me. You're sure I can't repay you by... No, no, mille merci. Well, then, at the very least, you must both be my guests for an evening while you're here in Paris. Drinks, dinner, make the rounds the hottest spots, maybe some girlfriends, huh? Oh, well, no. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, let me place a bet for you just to cover your hotel bill while you're in town. A bet? I'm afraid I do not exactly see what you are... Uh, well, he means on the horse races, uh, don't you? Well, yeah, you mean you have some, uh, let me see, some odd tips. Well, in a way, yes, yeah, tips. <laughs> you see... I represent a large syndicate which, uh, shall we say, is beginning to regulate the winning of races at French tracks. I'm merely the agent placing the syndicate money to the uh, considerable disadvantage of French bookmakers and gambling clubs until they fall into line. Actually, this is all confidential. Oh, but of course. By me. That's why I was so curt with you when you first came to the door, you understand. That I thought maybe you might be newspaper men. Occasionally they, they come embarrassingly close to realizing what the syndicate is up to. And naturally, any publicity would... Excuse me. Yes? Cable drum, monsieur. Merci. Tiens, garçon. Oh, merci bien, monsieur. So the point is, gentlemen, I'm sent my instructions by coded cablegram, so you can see what a spot I'd be in without my cipher. So, I'm grateful to you both. I most certainly am. Uh, you mean the bets you place, uh, the races have been fixed in advance? Well, now, fixed is a very unpleasant word, but... That's about the size of it. That's why it occurred to me that perhaps I could show my gratitude by placing a small bet for both of you, which with good odds would at least make you some cigarette money while you're here in Paris. Excuse me just a moment, will you? What a thing to happen in on, eh, Janet? What do you mean? Why, don't you get it? Fixed races. An absolutely sure thing. Uh-huh, I've heard of things like that, but... Heard of them? We have one right here in our gentlemen, lab. Gentlemen, gentlemen, this cablegram, I have a very good thing. If you'll just excuse me... Oh, but of course, I'm sure. Monsieur Harris, we did not mean to stay here so long as this. Oh, no, 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 please, not at all. I insist you stay here. There, there are drinks, cigars, seltzer, Perrier water over there on the table. I'll be back in a matter of, oh, 15, 20 minutes at the most. Well... Uh... My hat over there, yes, there. Now, sit right down, make yourselves at home, both of you. I'll be back in a jiffy. Yeah, put something on it for us. <laughs> So I leave this man Harris in my room with Jenny. There he sits, thinking of the possibility that he'll make some money on a sure thing, a fixed horse race, with no risk whatsoever to his own pocketbook. Not bad, huh? What's wrong with that? Probably, like Harris, you'd feel you don't know for sure yet that I'm maybe not some kind of a nut, but at least you'd have to admit I had good whiskey in my room, good cigars, I could rent a comfortable hotel suite. And in 20 minutes or so, I'd be back with a big smile on my face. Still here? Ah, good. We were wondering, Mr. Oh, Ryan. You know, I was afraid maybe you'd have left before I got back, before <laughs> before I'd even gotten a chance to learn your names. Did you think of that? Oh, stupid. Pardon, monsieur. I am André Janine, Mr. Lyon. And you, sir? My name is Jack Harris. Jack Harris, mighty pleased to have met both of you. Oh. When I think of it, here you are, Jenny. I got odds of four to one, another 80,000 francs for you, Harris. Well, say, what do you know? Hey, goodness, sir. Thank well, it you. It's like it grows on trees. <laughs> yes, sir, just like it grows on trees. 80,000 francs, about $200 for my sucker friend, Harris. And he never lifted a finger. That's living man, way up high on the hog. It's just as Harris himself says. Just think, Janet. The only limit is the capital you've got to put down on a race. How about that? Eh? How about that, indeed? See what I mean about nine out of ten being larcenous? And, of course, before this afternoon is over, another cablegram has been delivered, another bet placed, just as a convincer. And when I come back into the room... I hope you don't mind. I had them give it to me in big bills so it wouldn't be a nuisance for you to carry around. Oh, oh, oh a nuisance? Oh, a hundred, two hundred? Well, this will add up to eight hundred American dollars. That's not what I call a, a nuisance. Oh, <laughs> Now, to be sure, Harris has some 300,000 francs of my money in his pocket, but I don't need to worry too much. He won't run away. He's too anxious to get some more of this money that just grows on trees. 
Overnight, I leave him in the company of my friend Janine, for I have work to do to prepare the appearance of the club de turf. It's all a phony, of course. Staffed by my pals, all set up just to pluck Mr. Harris, just to separate him from some of his nice little old American greenbacks. And sure enough, as expected, next morning, he's back knocking at my hotel room door. Ah, come in, come in, come in. I was hoping you fellas show up. Drinks? I think none for me, thanks. For me, I can use one. Oh, after last night, I was celebrating my winnings in those uh, <laughs> fixed races. Uh, help yourself, Harris. Yes, sir. I'm glad to see you. I need someone I can trust. And after the way you two returned my wallet yesterday, I know you're both dependable. Well, anything I can do. You can do me a favor. Pick yourself up a little change at the same time. Here's my problem. The manager over the club detail is getting suspicious of me, I'm afraid. He's just before telling me I'll have to place my bet somewhere else. <laughs> I should think. After all the money you must have taken away from So, <laughs> now, if you two would take this guest card, it'll get you into the club, okay, and place a bet for me. I've got a horse in the fifth race. Bet him to win, and I'll give you a, I'll give you a blank check. Blank check? Uh, on credit. My, my credit, of course. Besides, you still have the few hundred thousand francs you won yesterday. Yes. Uh, Harris, you got your 300,000? Right here. Okay, here. You give yours to Jan in here. That makes 600,000 of the two of you. Now, are you listening? Yeah, sure, this right. This is very important. Do exactly as I tell you, Jan. When it comes time to bet, you make out and sign this check for 15 million francs. Don't let these figures unsettle you, Harris. It just sounds like a lot of money. Translated, that means only about 50,000 American dollars. Place the check together with your cash on Dancing Cloud in the fourth race at Chantier. The odds should be about four to one. That would net you at sea. Well, it's more than 200,000 American dollars. What a way to make money. <laughs> I, uh, oh, uh, by the way, Liam, I don't speak much French. Is oh, don't true? worry about that, Harris. In the club de turf, most of the betters are English or American anyway. All the business transacted in English if you don't speak French. Oh, fine. Well, come on, let's go, Janet. Now, please, one moment, Monsieur Lyme. Yes? I don't have 15 million francs in cash to make that check good. I don't like the idea of putting my name to a check for 15 million. Oh, now, million. look, John, and don't worry about that. This guest card assures you credit. Then when you win, you take up the check. Where's the trouble? Yes, but what if we lose? Oh, don't be a dope, Janet. You can't lose. It's a sure thing. <laughs> you catch on quick, Harris. You can't lose. <laughs> Orson Welles returns in just a moment as the third man. Orson Welles, as the third man, continues with horseplay. That Harris was a pleasure swindling him. The smarter, the shrewder, the sucker, the quicker he'll tumble. Now it was up to Janet to steer into the rooms I'd rented and decorated to look like a horse race bedding room. A few comfortable chairs for the patrons, all my friends, the patrons. A blackboard on which a man chalks down the odds in each of the race at three or four different tracks. A cashier behind his wicket window, paying out huge bundles of francs on pretended bets to the pretended club members. The, the whole thing a fancy front to impress my rich American Harris whose breath by now is coming faster, whose eyes are shining brighter, for he's about to make a huge profit on a sure, crooked wager. Quite a place, eh, Harris? Yeah, yeah. The first time I was ever in a place like this. See, the man with the headphones up there at the ball? Uh, oh, yeah. He's talking down the odds, no? The results, too, I guess, of other races. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's the cashier's window. Yeah. Uh, do you think we should make the bet now? But are the odds right? Oh, over there, see? Oh, sure. Well, I guess... Uh, yeah. You got that blank check. Right here. Oh, well, it's not blank anymore. Well, come on. Let's get up that window. Are uh, the odds on dancing powder? Right, oh, sure, four to sure, one. Sure, sure. Come on, hurry up, Jan, and I won't feel right. Let bet is down. All right, just so. Yes, sir. I want to place this on Dancing Cloud in the fourth at Chantilly. Mm, if you don't mind, sir, I'd like to see your card. 
of fine things. Dancing cloud in the fort at Chantilly. Check for 15 million francs and 600,000 in cash. All one bet is that? Why, yes, all one bet. Here's your ticket, sir. 15 million 600,000 francs on Dancing Cloud. Thank you. Next, please. Good afternoon, Marcel. One million francs across the board on Beaumarchais, please. Come on, Jana. Let's sit up near that collar. I'm worried. My name on that check. Well, why worry? How can you lose? Besides, everybody I heard was betting on Beaumarchais in this race. Relax, Jana. Relax. Lisa, there. Did you hear him? He did not even mention Dancing Cloud. Oh. Well, I guess they don't want to make it look too raw, you know. Why did I put my name on that check? Fifteen million francs. Oh, you'll be all right. Look at the way all these men around us are taking it. Sure, their money is on Beaumarché. See, there. Dancing Cloud. Third. How long do these races last, do you know? No, a minute or two, I guess. Oh, it's awful. Knowing that the race is probably over by now, and we sit here. My name on that check, 15 million. Do you think uh, uh, there's some mistake? Why did we do it? A man we never saw before yesterday. But he did win without that money, didn't I he? I know that. There'll be some mistake. There's some reason. For... I'll bet he's not even there. But... I, 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 sh- listen, listen. Winner in the fourth at Chantilly. Dancing Cloud. Oh, 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 we did it, boy, we oh, did it. How about that, eh? Oh, yeah, I ate ten years in those two minutes. Come on, let's get up to that window. A quarter of a million in American dollars. How about that, eh? I, say, you got that ticket? Don't worry about that ticket, I Oh, man, you know, those jockeys must really know their stuff to pull a race like that. And nobody suspects a thing. Winning ticket on the fourth race. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Will you be Money, please, Vanet. Yeah, I'll need yeah. several thousand meal notes, please. Now, what's more? Just a moment, sir. I'll check this count. Look at all that money. All right, sir. If you'll just count it, please. One moment, please, gentlemen. Yes? Uh, I am the manager here, gentlemen. Would you mind telling me how you got here? This but, is a private club, you know. Well, I know, but uh, I, I have my card right here, and... Well, uh, no, huh? Uh, credentials seem valid, but uh, you have a pretty large wager here. Uh, Marcel, uh, did you take this gentleman's check? Yes, sir, right here. Uh, well, you have won this bet. The money is yours. Uh, we'll put this check through the bank, and if they approve it, you'll be paid off. We'll impound your money right here. You are stopping in Paris, aren't you? Huh. Just until the bank reports back. But, uh, and by all means, <clears throat> keep your ticket. It's your receipt, gentlemen. A good day. Uh, just a moment, please. Yes? I'd prefer that you did not bank this check immediately. Huh? What is that? Well, well uh, I'll have the cash deposited in a local bank very soon, matter of a few days, and you can clear it through. But oh. right now, I'm a little embarrassed for funds in my then own you bank. you should not have written that check. Illegal, monsieur. Ah. Well, all right, I'll hold your check for a short time. Say, uh, a week? A week? Oh, it's irregular. But, uh, all right. You either deposit the 15 million francs in our bank, or bring it here to the club within the week. That will show you could have paid the bet in the event you lost. Good day, gentlemen. Poor Harris, poor Harris. I wish I could have been there to see him, how his face must have fallen, to see all that money, real money, too, right in front of him, be reaching out to take it. Uh, uh, Uh-uh-uh, not yet. So Harris, a very disappointed little sucker indeed, comes back to the hotel with Janine to talk it over with me. Don't you think that my getting us a week's time was pretty smart? Oh, sure, sure it was, but we still have to lay our hands on 15 million francs to make that check good. Yeah, exactly right, Harris. Well, Janine, how much cash can you raise? Cash? Mm, yes, cash. Maybe, yeah, let's see. I have about three and a half million francs in government bonds. I can cash those on short notice. Oh, how about you, Harris? Could you raise the other 11 and a half million? That's only about 37,000. American dollars. Well, I've been thinking about it, Lime. Uh, worrying on the way over. You know, most of my money back in the States is tied up in real estate. Mm. As far as I figure it, I can't raise more than 28000 in a hurry. Now, that leaves us stuck for 9000 Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I have a bank account here in Paris. I just hope my principals back in the States never hear about this, but I guess I can take the chance of Letting you have the other 9,000 until this thing is cleared up shouldn't take long. Oh, it would be wonderful if you would. This next day or so is crucial. Until Harris's cash can be cabled from the States, I've got to be sure that he's kept on ice. $28,000, it's worth all the time and effort. Two days, three, and his money arrives. Johnny and Harris and I walk to the club to turf together, Johnny and carrying the 15 million francs. So we get to the club. I look up from decoding a cablegram which was handed to me as I left the hotel. 
Hmm. It's Mal de Mer in the third race at Chantier today, three to one. Mal de Mer, eh? Yeah. Yes, you better look up that manager. There is. Oh, well, monsieur. Huh? One moment, please. Uh, you want him, gentlemen? You remember <laughs> Jadine and Monsieur Reis here? Oh, I'm afraid I... That bet for 15 million, you held up our check until... Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Just present your ticket to the cashier. I assume you have the money with you? Right here, yes, sir. Fine, fine. Just show the ticket and the money to the cashier. At the bottom of the first of the quarter, <coughs> get about by one, prickly heat by a half, and blue booty. Come on, Janet, cash that check, the ticket in. I'll just see if the odds are now the mayor three to one. Golly, my share of that dough at three to one? Yes, sir. This ticket, my receipt for uh, the manager told me just to show it to you. Oh, yes, Monsieur Janine, is it not? You have the 15 million in cash? Right here. Yeah, the odds are three to one, all right. Fine. Money, please. Now then, that's 78 million francs, right? <laughs> that's right, I believe. Mm, these packages are 10 million apiece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's 70 million. Golly. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's right. Count it, please. Well, why don't you place it on Mal de Mer? The second race is up. I think I'll watch the marker. That's a good idea. Put it all on Mal de Mer to win. First time for the second at Chantilly was 2.05. Off time was two five and a half. They're off and running in the second of Chantilly. 78 million on Mal de Mer to win. And here's your ticket, sir. Great heavens, a half million dollars for me. Well, oh. gentlemen, a cooling drink while we wait. <sighs> did you place the money, Janin? Yes, I did. I, I hope nothing goes wrong. Imagine. Here's the ticket line. Good Lord, man. You bet this horse to win? I said place. That horse will run second. At the quarter, Mal de Mer ahead. Dilemma a half and... Uh, I say manager. Oh. Uh, can we, can we exchange this ticket from a win ticket to a place ticket? Oh, no, no, really, no, no, sir. But, but it's very important, and I beg of you, please. I know, really, this is ridiculous. The race is already But it was run. a mistake, monsieur. I assure you that it was my intention that the wager should be for place, not win. I am sorry, sir. Nothing can be done after the marker has called the off time for the race. Rules of the house. Oh, you oh. dumb ox, Janine. My $9,000, I ought to thrash you within an inch of... Oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, oh, please, please, please. Take your hands Take your hand oh, off me. Damn stunts, you... Clock, you throw my money away. He ruined me too. Let me gentlemen, have gentlemen, it. please. please no, please, no, alive. No, don't. Oh, 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 alive. What have you done? Good Lord, Harris. Harris, quick. We've got to get out of here. Oh, you shot him. Come on, Harris, quick. The French police. <laughs> Of course, we left my specially rigged club as quickly as we could. Janin was sprawled in a welder of blood, and Harris, you may be sure, was stark, sheer, 100% terrified. But don't you worry. This was all just fun for the kiddies, just horseplay. The bullets I fired were blanks. The blood all over Janin's handsome Gallic profile was chicken blood, spurting out of a punctured bladder at the opportune moment. After all, we now had my friend Harris's 28,000 American dollars, didn't we? So our only problem was to terrify him into leaving town without peeping to the police. In my hotel room, I poured him a drink. Here. Here, Harris, oh. old man. You need this. Oh, thanks. I'm afraid I killed him. If you hadn't, I would have... I never should carry a gun. When I lose my temper, old man, I go crazy. We, we've got to think. The worst of it is I've involved you as an accomplice. Yeah. Good Lord, that's right. The one thing, it was a private oh. club. Now, look. You better pack, old man. Got an Italian visa? Uh, no, well, well, yes, go, I... go to Italy. Uh, Try and get rid of that suit somewhere. There's blood spattered on it. Throw it throw it off the train, perhaps, sir. Uh, yes, but uh, where in Italy? Oh, in Italy. Uh, there's my wife, my business. I Can't you lie low for a while, just a week or so, until we find out whether that, that fool Janine dies or not? I'll tell you. Go to the Hotel Splendide in Rome. I'll wire you there. I'll get, I'll get you out of this. Oh, yes, I'll get you out of this, old man. I feel, after all... That I am partially responsible for all this. Boy, oh, it's awfully good. Nonsense, idea. nonsense, old man. You do the same for me. Now then, into the bathroom. Go on, wash yeah, up. Right. There's a train to Rome in 30 minutes. Yes. And you've got to be on it. Uh, I will. He was, too. And I sat back, quietly savoring a highball, mentally spending my lion's share of his $28,000. My expenses weren't more than 8,000 tops. <laughs> what a wonderful horseplay it had been, to be sure. Hmm. This would be Janine with the loot. Yeah? Ah, Janine, my sweet, my lovely, my dove, my pigeon. 
Where's the dough? Hi, the flicks, the French cops, they uh, raided your club cops? right after you'd left. No, you're kidding. Did all the cats they could lay their hands on, arrested Louis and Bertrand what? and René and the whole crowd. Truth, see here, this is all I could grab before How much? I How it. much did you get? Our original steak, Harry, and a small profit. How much profit? Two mil franc notes, Harry. One piece. Two dollars and a half. <laughs> Harry Lime returns in just a moment. Now, Harry Lyme. That, friends, was one of the most successful failures I've ever had. And there's a sunny side to it. I'm still at liberty and not in prison. This is a great advantage in my business. I'm not at all depressed, for I know that this is a lovely world full of Jack Harrises, and I assure you I will meet another such very shortly. Until then, if you're going to spend money on horses, be sure they're on the merry-go-round. Well, the most you can lose is the brass ring. Mm-hmm. 